Hello, and welcome to another Symphony Story Time, where we share two of our favorite things, music and books. I'm Amy, I'll be reading to you today, and I have my friend Marilyn from the Oregon Symphony. Hi, nice to see you all again, nice to see you, Amy. Um, for those of you who don't remember me, I play the cello with the Oregon Symphony, and the cello sounds a little bit like this. It's so beautiful, and I think it's the perfect instrument for our story today, which is about animals at a hoedown. Woohoo! Should we get started? Yeah. Okay. Let's get this hoedown started. <laughs> Barn Dance by Bill Martin Jr. and John Archambault, illustrated by Ted Rand, published by Henry Holt and Company. Full moon shining, shining big and bright, pushing back the shadows, holding back the night. Not a thing stirring, quiet as could be, just the whisper of the leaves on the cottonwood tree. Old hound dog whining in his sleep, dreaming after rabbits in a game of hide and seek. Over in the farmhouse, all the lights were out, farmer and his wife and kids, not a one about. Except the skinny kid with questions in his head, much too full of wonderment to spend the night in bed. He was up about and listening. When the night owl said, Hoo hoo, come a little closer, come a little closer, listen to the night, there's magic in the air. Then the skinny kid heard it, heard it faint begin, a plink, 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 on the wind's violin. Coming from the cornfield, sweet and soft and low, music honeyed up by the old scarecrow, a plinkin' on the fiddle strings to tune them up just so. The scarecrow tucked the fiddle underneath his chin and fiddled out a welcome to all his country kin. He fiddled through the woods and fields and all around the farm, bidding everybody come to a hoedown in the barn. There was so much chit and chatter when the critters all arrived that no one saw the skinny kid oozling and hiding. Just in time to hear the crow call the dance begin. Grab yourself a partner and jump right in. Right hand, left hand, around you go. Now back to back your partner in a do -si do Mules to the center for a curtsy and a bow. And hey there, skinny kid, show the old cow how. Skinny kid, a ticking and a talking, and a humming and a yeeing and a rocking and a socking, and he danced his little toe through a hole in his stocking. He leaped the apple barrel and the pumpkins in a pile, and he showed him how to wagon wheel barnyard style. Now rock it to the moon and powder puff your noses and hurry home to mama. Now spin once again, and that's a plenty. But the fat little pigs whirled round and round. They got so dizzy that they all fell down. The sky was warming up for the coming of the day when the skinny kid heard the night owl say, Hoo-hoo! 
Morning's coming closer, morning's coming closer. The magic time is over, night'll soon be gone. The old dog stretched and blinked a sleepy eye, just a blink too late to see the skinny kid slip by. He tiptoed through the kitchen and tiptoed up the stairs, as quiet as a feather on a breath of air. He hummed a little do si -do, flopped himself in bed with the wonders of the barn dance dancing in his head. That was so much fun. Yeah. I love that story. <laughs> and the cello is perfect with it. And I noticed you played so many different ways. You weren't always playing with your bow. Can you tell our friends about that? Yeah, um, I don't know how many of you remember from last time, but I can make my strings vibrate on the cello either by plucking them with my fingers, which I did some of that during this book, or by uh, bowing across the string with my bow. And I think one of the reasons that the cello is really good for a hoedown is because the cello is not as high as the violin. It's not as low as the double bass. It has this nice middle range, kind of like what our voice sounds like. So sometimes when I'm playing that, that little ditty, it's almost as if I'm like yodeling away. It was perfect <laughs> and so much fun. We have some questions from some of you. Can I ask you sure. some questions? Okay. Drew is seven. He wants to know if you ever play the cello with it under your chin like a violin. That's a great question, Drew. You know, I've tried and tried to put it, but I'm just, oh, oh, not, my arm is not <laughs> quite long enough. Um, because it is much bigger than the violin, this is how we play the cello. You know, a long time ago, before we had this thing called the end pin, people would have to just hold the cello with their legs and their feet. But now, since the instrument has evolved, we have this nice little end pin, and it's easy to just play it like this. Interesting. That was a good question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Drew. Spencer is four and just wants us to know that he likes stories about animals that play music. Me too. I do too. Me too. Especially if we they dance. Do. Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a good one. Winnie is six and wonders if you have a favorite song. Oh, that's a good question. Well, um, so right now, Winnie, I have a daughter who's almost 6'2", and we listen to a lot of Trolls, and we listen to a lot of Frozen, so those are not my favorite <laughs> songs. Um, but I'd say I really like to dance along to feel better when I'm dancing. Sometimes after a big dance party, like what we just heard in that book, I like to kind of wind down a little bit. So I'm going to play you a different kind of dance. Okay, so something beautiful we can just listen to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is when I say goodbye to you and thank you for sharing your time with us. And we hope you'll join us for another symphony story time. So I'm going to leave you with a little winding down music um, after that big dance party. This is the Sarah Bond from Bach's Cello Suite Number 1. Mm-hmm.